Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the seventh annual Opportunity Talks Breakfast. I'm Jane Park, founder and CEO of TOKI. I'm also a proud Washington State Opportunity Scholarship Board member and your host for today's program. It is such a pleasure to be with you this morning to celebrate a very important milestone in WSOS history, our 10th anniversary. If you can't tell, right now I'm in Bellingham, Washington, home of Bellingham Technical College. Today, there are 47 of our career and technical scholars enrolled here. These scholars are pursuing their certificate, apprenticeship, or associate degrees in programs like advanced manufacturing, nursing, construction management, and so much more. If you joined us for last year's event, this might feel familiar to you, but with a new twist. Each time you see me in today's program, I will be in a new part of our beautiful state where we are being supported by local employers and have students enrolled in various campuses. Be sure to shout out your hometown or alma mater in the chat box if you spot me in your region. You will want to stay tuned during this program for an opportunity to win some pretty sweet prizes. One of you watching will win a Microsoft Surface Pro 8. And four more lucky winners will win a Toki gift set that includes some Washington treats and a Toki photo video bow card made with recycled water bottles. Each of you have received a postcard in the mail containing a unique number. Over the next hour, five winning numbers will pop up on your screen. If your unique number matches the winning number on the screen, you'll win one of the five prizes. If you're having trouble finding your postcard, your number can also be found in the email we sent you this morning. If your number is called, send us an email at otalks at wa opportunityscholarship.org, including your name, your mailing address, and your winning number. If you have any questions, be sure to drop them in the chat box. We have an awesome program lined up for you. On behalf of the Board of Directors, and most importantly, on behalf of the Opportunity Scholars, thank you so much for joining us this morning. The Opportunity Scholarship champions Washington students for Washington jobs. I'm proud to be associated with an organization that is making a difference in the lives of thousands of Washington students. Because, like many of our scholars, I too am an immigrant who couldn't speak English when I first started school. I'm the daughter of an orphan who was separated from his parents at the border between North and South Korea at age nine. Education has been the key to transforming my life. That's why I'm here today to support WSOS and to celebrate Washington students as they launch their careers and companies in our state. The Opportunity Talks Breakfast is our largest event of the year. Every dollar raised will be matched by the state and every gift of $250 or more will be matched a second time by the Challenge Fund. That means that every dollar is multiplied by four, quadrupling your gift. I want to thank everyone who has already donated. And to those of you who haven't had the chance yet, there are several ways you can give. If you have any questions about how to make a gift at any point during this program, please send us a chat message or reach out to us at otalks at waopportunityscholarship.org. Here to tell you more about the impact of this program over the past 10 years, thanks to your support, is WSOS Executive Director Kimber Connors. Welcome, Kimber. Thank you, Jane, for that introduction. And thank you to everyone online for tuning in. Like all of you, I'm wishing for the day when we're all together over coffee and breakfast. But sadly, that day isn't today. I know we aren't out of the woods yet. Much uncertainty looms. Yet today, I'm optimistic. Noam Chomsky once said, Optimism is a strategy for making a better future. Because unless you believe that the future can be better, you're unlikely to step up and take responsibility for making it so. That's why I'm here today. And I bet that's why you're here too. We believe the future can be better. And we know it's our responsibility and our privilege to be a part of building it together. That's what WSOS is all about, making a better future. 
This year marks the Washington State Opportunity Scholarship's 10th anniversary doing this incredible work. Back then, Washington needed an innovative solution for a state under pressure to better fund higher education. A solution to support students facing untold barriers to accessing education. And a solution for employers struggling to hire the talent they needed to reach market demands. The original visionaries of WSOS saw that this program could be that solution. They asked our community to believe in a program that did not yet exist, to invest their time, talent, and treasure, and trust it could have tangible impacts for students, our state, and employers. I can say with confidence that we've surpassed even the boldest dreams of what our visionaries thought this program could accomplish. 2,717 donors, 1,294 mentors, more than 100 million dollars in direct scholarship support to students, 5,400 graduates and counting. It takes a village to do this work, to change lives, to change an economy. Thank you, thank you, thank you. A decade later, one critical thing has changed. We're no longer asking people to believe in something they can't see. This is no longer a program that isn't but could be. Our outcomes are clear. According to a recent state audit, baccalaureate scholars are twice as likely to graduate in four years when compared with peers, and they earn twice what their families made when they applied within five years of graduating. This scholarship has the power to change individuals, families, and communities. We know the jobs of the future require post-secondary training. We know innovative industries thrive when they reflect the communities where they're based. And we know WSOS is a solution that prepares Washington students for Washington jobs. So while we've certainly achieved a lot in a decade of impact, the need for WSOS is no less acute than it was 10 years ago. You may have heard us say that we're on track to serve 20,000 students by 2025 with this life-changing scholarship. And that's an amazing fact that I'm incredibly grateful to be a part of. But what about after 2025? We've built a program that offers incredible opportunity for today's high school students. The opportunity before all of us this morning is a chance to change the lives of another generation of students, today's middle schoolers. With your help, we can build a world in which we commit to the class of 2026, 2027, 2028, 2029, 2030, that we will be there to support their dreams, to launch their careers. And while serving 20,000 students will have an incredible impact, we're only scratching the surface of the need. Last year, we were only able to select 29% of eligible applicants for the bachelor's degree program, and only 38% of eligible applicants for the career and technical scholarship. That means that last year alone, about 2,700 students who are deserving, highly qualified, and interested in pursuing credentials in the fields our state needs most that we were not able to select. This is our opportunity to redefine WSOS, not as a test case, not as a startup, but as a sustaining model that can continue to offer opportunity for another generation of students to come. It's an opportunity to give our world-class employers the chance to invest in their own future as well as in the future of the students we serve. Later in the program, you'll hear about some exciting commitments to Opportunity Scholars from returning Cornerstone partners. Their vote of confidence in the work we've done to date and their willingness to recommit to our future enables us to chart a new course for the next decade, so stay tuned. Washington's got talent. We've got the right people in our communities and the right companies to take our economy into the future. Our task is to connect these talented, bright Washingtonians to the pathways that lead to the jobs our industries need. Our challenge is to remove the real systemic barriers in their path. Thanks for being here with us this morning, addressing this challenge together. As we look forward, our shared optimism for a better future gives us the collective power to make it so. And speaking of optimism, we have a very special guest to hear from next. 
She's one of the original visionaries who helped bring the idea of WSOS to life. A spark of hope that turned into a life-changing reality for thousands of students. I'm delighted to introduce former Washington State Governor, Christine Gregoire. Thanks, Kimber. And thanks everyone for joining in this morning uh, to celebrate the 10th anniversary of the Washington State Opportunity Scholarship. You know, my job as governor was to promote Washington State in the country and globally. And it wasn't hard to do because then and now we were leading when it came to things like innovation for which we're known everywhere, for our research, for our technology. And so we began to ask ourselves, just as we were beginning to come out of the Great Recession, were we gonna be able to continue that global competition to continue to lead the world in those areas. And unfortunately, what had happened in the Great Recession is it had hit hard at our higher education institutions. So we were concerned as to whether they were going to be able to ensure that we could fill worker shortages in those fields in which we were leading and needed to continue to do so. So we brought a group together of really important leaders and influencers and private partners led by Brad Smith of Microsoft. And there we asked, what is it we want to accomplish? And what we concluded is we really wanted to make sure that we had a continuing growth of those who were interested and wanted to excel in the STEM fields and the healthcare industries. Because we knew we could foresee worker shortages there and those were key positions to our economic success. Secondly, we wanted to break the cycle of poverty, particularly when it came to those students who were low income and first generation who might not be able to get a chance at filling those jobs. Thirdly, we wanted to make sure that those students that got the chance called Washington State home. And lastly, we wanted to continue to lead the globe in finding cures to cancer and driving new technology that would bring about future kinds of opportunities that no one could envision uh, at that point in time. So we took our idea to the Washington State Legislature and in 2011, they embraced the idea. I signed that bill and we created the Washington State Opportunity Scholarship. We're 10 years later and I gotta tell you back then, I was really optimistic and I was thinking big um, and I gotta tell you, my dreams have been fulfilled. But I can also tell you, we've only just begun. Uh, the competition has become fierce. Uh, the worker shortage has become obvious. And you know what? Our rightful place leading globally is still there. So we want to continue to make sure that history of the last 10 years is just our beginning and we can grow and build on what we've accomplished. And to do that, I'd like to turn the, the podium over to our current governor, Governor Jay Inslee, for the great state of Washington, my friend. Thanks, Jay, for being here. Hi, Governor Jay Inslee here, and I would like to thank Governor Gregoire for that introduction and for her leadership that's made such a difference in our state. I'm really glad to join you today to celebrate the 10th anniversary of the Washington State Opportunity Scholarship. What a decade. And I have to agree, when this program was created, I don't think anyone could have predicted where we'd be 10 years later. The impacts of the pandemic have been devastating, of course, and they've served as a sobering reminder of how much work we still have to do. Thankfully, programs like WSOS are leading the way in these efforts. Now, even before this pandemic began, we were experiencing a shortage of healthcare professionals, of biomedical researchers, engineers, teachers, and more. And COVID-19 has simply exacerbated a pre-existing problem. It's also increased in inequalities for people of color and people without a post-secondary credential. That's why programs like the Washington State Opportunity Scholarship are so critical now more than ever. We know that the jobs of the future will require increased education or training after high school. That's why our state has set an ambitious goal to have 70% of Washington adults obtain a post-secondary credential by 2030. And we know that in order to make that happen, 
We have got to support programs like the Opportunity Scholarship. That's why we continued to be its biggest supporter, matching every dollar raised privately, more than $100 million to date. We do this because we know Washington students are the smart, capable leaders our future needs. And we know these opportunity scholars will create a workforce that better represents the incredible diversity in our state, bringing economic opportunity to communities who are too often left behind. We know these scholars will develop new vaccines, keep our crops growing, maintain our ecosystem, and engineer new solutions to our most complex problems. With climate change hitting us so hard, we certainly need those talents. So you don't have to take it from me to know that this program works. If you've had a chance to mentor one of these incredible scholars, you've heard their vision for the future and seen their strength and resolve to achieve their dreams. That's why companies and individuals like Microsoft, Boeing, Gary and Jennifer Rubens, the Bomber Group, and many more have donated thousands or even millions because they know an investment in these scholars is our best hope for the future. So my thanks to each of you for being here this morning. And I hope you'll continue to stay safe and stay healthy and enjoy this incredible program. You're paying it forward big time and you're building a better Washington for, for us all. Thanks, and let's go get them. Hey, looks like I headed south on I-5 and find myself in Vancouver, Washington, home of the Fighting Oswalds of Clark College. I'm here at one of Peace Health's medical centers where more than 35 employees volunteered to be mentors in Skills That Shine last year. Thank you, Peace Health. The work of WSOS is supported by the outstanding and sustaining contributions of the following cornerstone partners. Hooray! Thank you to the State of Washington, to Microsoft Corporation, to the Boeing Company, Rubens Family Foundation, and Balmer Group. An event like this is made possible through the generous sponsorship of the following corporate leaders. For the seventh year in a row, thank you to our title sponsor, Costco Wholesale. Our presenting sponsors are BECU Foundation, Kaiser Permanente, and Providence St. Joseph Health. Thanks to our leadership sponsors, Battelle, Bristol-Myers Squibb, Kastner Family Foundation, Hansen Consulting Group, and Senegal Family Foundation our achievement partner, Parametrics, and inspiration sponsors, Avista Foundation, the Boeing Company, and Multicare. We'd also like to thank our initiative sponsor, Fred Hutch. And finally, thanks to our incentive sponsors and education sponsors. Please show your appreciation to these partners by dropping a thank you in the chat. This morning would not have been possible without the leadership of many generous friends and supporters. Thank you to my colleagues on the WSOS Board of Directors. We'd also like to thank the incredible supporters who contributed to the Challenge Fund and made our four to one gift match possible. And the success of Opportunity Talks, whether virtual or in person, is due to the support of our Executive Leadership Committee champions and all of our table hosts. We really couldn't do it without you. Thank you for your generous support. And now there's a message from our friends at Kaiser Permanente about why they see their investment in WSOS as a win for industry partners. Thank you, Jane. Hi, I'm Kim Wickland, Director of Community Health at Kaiser Permanente Washington. Kaiser Permanente is proud to be a sponsor and partner of Washington State Opportunity Scholarship. Washington is a state that is ripe with career opportunities and talented young individuals but too many young people face barriers to the career of their dreams. Washington State Opportunity Scholarship is committed to the success of their scholars so they can overcome those barriers, learn the skills, and build a network to take advantage of the many opportunities in the great state of Washington. Kaiser Permanente is especially excited about our partnership because we are committed to fostering equitable and healthy communities. Financial stability through STEM careers is foundational to that goal. Washington State Opportunity Scholarship plays an important role in removing financial barriers so that more people can pursue an education that sets them up for careers in STEM industries and financial stability. 
Something else that is near and dear to our hearts at Kaiser Permanente is that Washington State Opportunity Scholarship is also part of the solution for addressing the healthcare workforce shortage and for ensuring that the workforce of the future reflects the diversity of Washington's communities. Finally, Kaiser Permanente is committed to ensuring that our own employees thrive and find joy at work. Being a mentor for Washington State Opportunity Scholarship is a great way to do that. So far, we've had about 45 employees sign up to be Washington State Opportunity Scholar mentors, and what a gift that is. Kiana Moffat is a social worker at Kaiser Permanente. She served for three consecutive years as a mentor. Kiana shared, to be a mentor makes me a more understanding human being. It keeps my mind young and my skills fresh. I am a firm believer that successful people who don't mentor others will over time lose touch with their own excellence. Mentoring keeps me connected with my purpose and my why. What beautiful words from Kiana. These are just a few of the reasons why Kaiser Permanente deeply values our partnership with Washington State Opportunity Scholarship. So thank you. We are grateful for you, all of your scholars and your supporters. Right now, I'm here with Spike the Bulldog at Gonzaga University. <laughs> he looks a little different than I thought he would. Here at Gonzaga, we have seven scholar leads serving 53 students. Kaiser Permanente has been an incredible partner to WSOS. They were inspired to become partners early on. They could see that access to talent is vital to their own growth, and they invested in building a workforce with Washington roots. They continue to support us today, helping us respond to Washington's changing workforce through their support, and more recently, through a named scholarship grant of over $100,000 in 2021. Next up, the moment we've all been waiting for, Washington's Got Talent. That's right, it's time. Go ahead and grab yourself a hot drink, kick back, and enjoy the show. You might have seen talent shows for singers, dancers, and comics, but you've never seen anything like this. Hello, and welcome to the premiere of Washington's Got Talent. Tens of thousands of aspiring STEM and healthcare superstars have applied for the Opportunity Scholarship since the premiere of Washington State Opportunity Scholarship in 2011. And our scholars have gone on to do incredible things in their communities. We have some of the most talented STEM, healthcare, and trade stars submit their applications for today's competition. We've reviewed every single application, scouted scholars from all over the state, and found three finalists who rose to the top. Now we'll get to see the faces behind these applications. But first, let's meet our star-studded panel of judges. First up is Opportunity Scholar alum, Leah Boyd. When Leah is not in class at the University of Washington Medical School, you can find her practicing her figure eight knot as she prepares to rock climb Mount Kilimanjaro and paint it at the same time for the Guinness Book of World Records next summer. Next, we have Opportunity Scholar alum, Edgar Santos Aguilar. By day, you can find Edgar as a vendor manager at Amazon, and by night, you can catch Edgar practicing karaoke should he ever become the masked singer. And last but not least, we have WSOS Awards Director Steve Walker. When Steve is not helping thousands of students receive their scholarships from WSOS, he is editing his submission video to be the next contestant on Survivor. All right, Washington, now that we've met our judges, let's get ready to meet our first contestant right now. My mom is my biggest supporter. Every single day that I work, she makes me lunch. And the reason she makes me lunch is for one specific reason. And I oftentimes say, mom, I'm an adult. I can make my own lunch. She tells me, Nikita, give me the chance to serve you because time will come, I will no longer have that chance. My mom is an uh, individual with a big, big heart who not only loves to serve, but provides an example of what service looks like. My name is Nikita Fesenko. 
I'm a son to a loving mother. I'm a Washington State Opportunity Scholar. I'm a nurse who's there to serve people. I just love people. I love interacting with people. And when I went through pre-nursing program, kind of a little pathway to, towards my career, I, I met with incredible group of people called geriatric population. I call them personally well-experienced people. And those people completely won my heart. And I just saw how, how much of an impact an individual can do being wholeheartedly open. And, and it just brought me so much joy. Going into nursing, as a fresh nurse during a pandemic definitely became a challenge. One of the biggest challenges that you have to overcome is the ability to look past all, all the negatives, everything else that's happening outside of the hospital and just focusing on the patient because your priority is that patient who you are serving. Everything else, forget. I believe I bring enthusiasm, open-mindedness, ability to reflect and actually value my patient's input. Being able to listen to a patient and speak to their heart and mind, not only to their physical body, has a huge impact on an individual. Hey Nikita, it's awesome to meet you. It is a pleasure to meet you too. So we've gotten to learn a little bit about you and I think it's really amazing that you became an ER nurse at the beginning of the pandemic. That's really awesome. Can we show some love around here? So now we got to see a little bit more about your talents. We definitely want to learn more about you. So what led you to pursue your career? That's a very difficult question I've been asked all my life. And I think the only answer I came up with, compassion and service. I became very compassionate towards the people that I serve and service is something that brings me joy. Nikita, can you tell me what is the most valuable piece of advice that you would give forward to other scholars or alumni? Ask questions. Asking questions is the biggest blessing that you and I possess, but we oftentimes don't take advantage of it. Ask questions, get answers, ask more questions. I say that a lot too. <laughs> That's great advice. <laughs> so Nikita, what do you wish people knew about Opportunity Scholars? I think one of the things that people need to understand about Opportunity Scholars, they are dreamers. An opportunity to dream about something that is bigger than you is very, very powerful. And oftentimes we have a dream, but we don't always fulfill it. We don't always take that leap of faith forward in order to actually perceive what you want to do. And I think Opportunity Scholars have a dream and they're willing to take that step out of the comfort zone to actually pursue it. Okay, so I have Possibly our toughest question so far. Does pineapple belong on pizza? Believe it or not, when <laughs> it came to the States, I had no clue pineapple pizza even existed until I tried it, and I think it's really good, and it should be on pizza. That's it. Thank you so much, Nikita. We really appreciated learning about you. It was my pleasure. Thank you for sharing a little bit about yourself, Nikita. We're so excited to see what you will accomplish. Audience, be sure to put in the chat what your answer is to that last question. Everyone, please join me now in welcoming our second contestant. The coffee ceremony is just a unique part of our tradition. And I respect my tradition, I love my tradition even though I'm living in America. <laughs> um, so I make coffee in this way. My name is Mastoal Aniu. Um, I was born and raised in Ethiopia, in a small village, um, a place there, a lack of schools, a lack of health facilities. That gave me like the power like to focus and to be who I am right now. I heard about WSOS freshman year. I thought the scholarship was just financial. It was way different than that. Mentoring, um, leadership, advisor, a lot of opportunities at the same time. I'm currently studying MCAT um, while I'm working a full time to support a family. I want to be a doctor because I want to see college care be diverse. I have a kid, I have a husband, I have a other life. I just want to be one person showing like, hey, you know, there's a way that you can be this. My big dream is I want to work as a physician here in Seattle. 
and after like 10, 15 years, I want to build a hospital back home. I just want to give some other opportunities for people over there. Hello, everyone. Hi, Masawal. Hey. Welcome to Washington's Got Talent. Thank you. Um, it's so nice to meet you. We would love to know a bit about what inspired you to pursue a biology and pre-med pathway at WSU. Um, the place that I grew up is a small village in Ethiopia. Um, the community that I lived with did not have the access to, you know, healthcare facilities and physicians around there. Um, so that inspired me to be a physician. So that's why I went to uh, Washington State University um, to pursue a biology degree as a pre-med to go to medical school and to be a physician. Wow, that's really powerful. I'm so glad that you are pursuing this really difficult pathway. And thanks for all of your work because um, healthcare really needs people like you. Thanks. Um, so what do you wish people knew about you? Um, I don't like to say it this way, but like how I am strong fighting for myself to be here now, um, to go to school. Um, you know, I wish everyone asks who I am so I can explain or I can share who I am so that might be motivating or like empowering. Well, thank you most of all. Of course. Now, a truly difficult question. Does pineapple belong on pizza? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you so much for joining us, Mastowal. It's been really nice to get to know you better. Of course, thank you. Thank you so much for sharing your story with us today and for all the work you are doing to keep us healthy and safe in our community. I feel so inspired by our last two contestants. Audience members, please answer in the chat what inspires you most about Mastowal or Nikita's story. And finally, Last but not least, please join me in welcoming our third and final contestant. My name is Yoon Nguyen. I was born and raised in Saigon, Vietnam, and uh, immigrated here when I was 15, um, so about six years ago. When we came here, we had like $600, and that was it. Um, so yeah, it was like basically like a reset button for um, my whole family. I had no idea how the education system here works but I managed to find out about program for low-income students and also first-generation students, which is like me. Um, and that program introduces me to WSOS, actually. Uh, I apply and I got accepted, and I think that's like changed my life. I'm now a senior at UW studying public health, global health, and biology. The pandemic is just exacerbated disparities that you know, already exist among vulnerable populations. It kind of motivates me even more because you know, I want to make a difference in the community that are the same as mine. I also uh, volunteer for Telehealth Access for Seniors uh, where I collect used tablets, phones, even sometimes laptops from my neighborhood so we can donate those to low-income patients at community health clinics and VA hospitals. Not everyone has access to a video and a mobile device to connect you know, face to face with the uh, providers and we wanted to bridge that gap. After I graduate from college next June, I uh, intend to pursue a Master in Public Health degree and eventually, uh, down the road, a Doctor in Public Health degree. I aspire to become a public health professional where I can make an impact on people's health on a population level. As a Vietnamese American, as a woman, as an immigrant, uh, from a low-income family, I want to represent my community in the field of public health. Hey, New. Welcome to Washington's Got Talent. Hi, thank you. You ready to answer some tough questions? I think so. Okay, then let's get started. What made you choose to pursue a double major in public health, global health, and biology? I'm really interested in improving the health uh, of the population, and then biology allows me to understand the science behind diseases. I'd love to know, who would you say is the most influential person in your life? My parents, because they are really resilient by giving up everything we had in Vietnam, immigrated here, give my sister and I better opportunities. 
Thank you. That's definitely must have been a huge impact on your life. Uh, considering the experience they've had, what is one piece of advice you'd want to give to scholars or alumni? Have the initiative to take advantage of resources available to you. I couldn't agree with you more. But here, my, my next question to you is, um, is water wet? No. <laughs> Can, you tell Can us I why? explain? <laughs> yeah. Water makes you wet, but it's not wet itself. I like that. Um, do you think pineapple belongs on pizza? Yes. <laughs> so, if you could invite any celebrity to a dinner party, who would it be and why? Dr. Fauci, because I wanted to ask him how he lead this whole COVID pandemic in the U.S. I would love to know that too. <laughs> thanks for sharing that. Well, it's been really fun getting to know you and thanks for coming to Washington's Got Talent. Thank you. Let's light up the chat for our finalists, Mastual, Nikita, and Nu. Now that you've had a chance to learn a little bit about each scholar alum and what they bring to the table, it's time for our judges to announce the winner. Drum roll, please. Oh, wait. Um, okay. Uh, well, I'm sorry, this has never happened before, but uh, I'm hearing from our judges that they need more time. While the judges are deliberating, let's go to the next segment in our program. It is my pleasure to introduce Opportunity alum, Sitlali Ramirez, and Walgreens Boots Alliance CEO, Roz Brewer. And we'll be right back with the great reveal of the 2021 Washington's Got Talent winner. Take it away, Sit Lolly. Raz, it's so great to have you here and it's an honor to meet you. Thank you for talking with me today. Thank you for having me. So what I wanted to do today was have a conversation with you because we are all so inspired by you and everything you have accomplished. I mean, you're an incredible woman and you were the first African-American and first woman to become Chief Operations Officer at Starbucks. You're the first African-American woman to lead out Walgreens Boots Alliance and the CEO of the largest company ever led by a black woman. And like many Opportunity Scholars, you were also a first-generation college student. You were born and raised in Detroit. You were the youngest of five siblings. And you grew up in a very unique environment. This was post-civil rights movement. So what was your childhood like during that time? And also, what were the messages you heard about higher education? Yes, so you're right. I am the youngest of five children. And when I was three, my mother entered the workforce as well. So I had dual parents working outside the home, uh, youngest of five. So growing up in that kind of environment, I always tell people the story that I was probably one of the youngest latchkey children you could ever imagine because at three years old, my older siblings would come home from school maybe about 15 to 30 minutes after my mom had left for work. So I was left by myself for about 30 minutes um, until my siblings came home, but I'd stand in the window and all the neighbors would watch me and, you know, sort of do their babysitting through the window and tell me, you know, don't get down off the couch. So first of all, I started off as one of the youngest latchkey children that I know of. Secondly, all I ever knew was hard work because my parents both worked in the automotive industry and they worked shift work. So sometimes my mom would be on the afternoon shift, sometimes she'd be on the midnight shift. She'd have to take the bus. If there were 12 inches of snow in Detroit, she'd walk three blocks to catch the bus to, to work. So I saw all of that. And then I saw my dad work three jobs. And then I saw my older siblings, you know, be in college while I was in junior high, high school. And at one time there were four of us in college. So all I saw was hard work and then the requirement of my parents that we had to go to college. There was just no other option. And so the importance of education was always in our family culture. I am also a first generation student and I know a lot of us are. Um, so I understand what you're saying. It's great to pave that way, right, for future generations. Um, you had also mentioned, um, I remember that your sister, right, helped you apply for your financial aid package. Um, but, but you also had a unique encounter with philanthropy. Um, talk about that and the importance of scholarships in your academic career. 
Yes, absolutely. So being first generation, you know, my parents didn't understand, you know, there was no such thing as college visits, right? And quite honestly, at the time I went to college, there was, you know, not even the internet. So I'm looking at, you know, brochures that happened to come in the mail. So, but my older sister, she was in college at the time and she helped me apply for financial aid. Uh, but at one point, financial aid wasn't enough. And I had to find my way. It was uh, the middle of my sophomore year and my parents, just the funding had just run dry at that point. And so I was either going to come home at Christmas time and not return, or I went to the school and I just said, look, I need some help. And so I began to just really sit with the um, Office of Advancement and they helped me understand about some private scholarships that was there. And there was a gentleman whose wife had passed away and she had donated money to the college and she wanted the scholarships to be awarded to students who had done and continued to participate in community service. And so I had been working in the community. There was a, um, it was a, a home for homeless children uh, right near my school. And um, I actually worked and tutored over there. I was in walking distance, so it was easy for, for me to do. And so I would go to this home after school um, a couple of days a week. And um, he admired that and actually I was awarded the scholarship for two and a half years uh, and finished my education at Spelman. Thanks so much for sharing that. What is the importance of diversity of thought when hiring and building a team? Sure, I'm so glad you talked about diversity of thought because that's where it all starts um, and race and gender play a role in that. Um, I will tell you that in the tough, most complex problems, I've been most successful when the room and the decision makers around me have been from a broad scale of backgrounds. Um, these problems that we face in companies now are truly complex. There's never a silver bullet to solve a problem. There's not one thing, if, if that were true, it would never become a problem, right? And so you have to think about that. I can remember times when, you know, I was, I was in organizations and they worked in silos. And so all of the scientists would be at the table trying to solve a problem and we hadn't talked about supply chain. We hadn't talked about the consumer insights. We hadn't talked about training and development. And when you get that broad perspective on a very deep and intense problem, the solutions come faster and they come richer. And then what you really see is that you're developing people when you don't really have to be intentional about developing because people learn more from their peers than they do from me as a leader telling them what they need to do next, right? They're watching as, you know, just as our, as in our nature is to be competitive with the person next to you. And so then you want to be better than the next person than you. You want to learn from them and take that to the next meeting. So that diversity of thought is really, really important. And I think one thing we have to also realize is that change is constant. And so we don't know sometimes what the next problem is around the corner, but if you've got the right people in your decision set with you, they're at least thinking in different ways and challenging the status quo and thinking about what's next after what's next. And so that diversity of thought to me is just, it is tremendous and it makes a huge difference in outcomes. Well, one last question for you, Res, and that's what advice do you have for all of us to reach our full potential? You know, the most important thing you can do is get to know yourself. Um, Self-awareness is really important because at that point, when people are telling you things about yourself that you don't identify with, even if you've done the self-check, um, you know in your gut, you know, what to value and what not to value. Um, and I have met so many people um, who have gotten further along in their career, but they eventually hit a wall because they weren't aware of what their real abilities were or what their real potential was, right? They maybe lowered the bar too low for themselves because they hadn't really thought about their full potential and they hadn't thought about what they're capable of doing. So I am a huge proponent of having the most self-awareness you possibly can. It's the best thing to lead you on your life's journey. So I say good luck to you and to many other women and the other scholarship awardees. And, you know, I look forward to reading about all of you all in the future. And um, it's exciting to see how you guys are thinking about what's next. Thank you so much, Res. I We take that to heart. Um, well, I want to thank you for joining us and being willing to share 
both your advice and your experience with us. It's honestly been an honor. It's been a pleasure to connect with you in this way virtually. So thank you. Thank you. Take care and good luck. Thanks, Sit Lolly, for moderating such an insightful discussion. And thank you so much, Roz, for letting us into your world and sharing your words of wisdom. And now, it's finally the moment we've all been waiting for. The judges are ready to announce the winners. We were so incredibly impressed by the three of you. However, it made our decision extremely difficult. That's right. So we decided to do something pretty unusual and award all of you with first place. Congratulations. And for coming with such talent today, we're going to award you all a brand new Microsoft Surface. You've given us just such incredible faith in the talent Washington's got, and we're excited to see you follow the dreams you shared with us today. So thank you all, and back to you, Jane. So all the top scholars all agree, along with my family, pineapple does belong on pizza. Thank you for settling that debate once and for all. I'm sure you're as inspired by our scholars as I am. Thank you, Nikita, Nu, and Masterwal, for sharing your stories and making us all so proud. You're all incredible and have such a bright future ahead of you. For those of you who are interested in connecting with these alumni, please check out the chat for their LinkedIn profiles. Students like these are the solution to our state's workforce challenge. Next, you'll be hearing from three of our most loyal champions and cheerleaders. These three Cornerstone partners have invested so much in making WSOS a win-win-win for students, employers, and the state. They've been with us from the very beginning. And today, they're joining us to share some very special and exciting news. I'm Nikita. I live in Tri-Cities, Washington. I serve as a nurse. Opportunity Scholarship provided me this opportunity, and I'm very grateful for it. Hi, I'm Nu, and thanks for the support of the Washington State Opportunity Scholarship. I'll be graduating in June and will pursue a career in public health. Hi, I am Mastuo. Thanks to the support of Opportunity Scholarship, I just graduated pre-med, and I am going to become a pediatrician. It's because of inspirational students like these that I'm making a recommitment grant of $10 million to WSOS. Each year, there are thousands of students who apply that are not selected. This recommitment will ensure that more students have access to a higher education. The Boeing Company is proud to be a founding partner in the Washington State Opportunity Scholarship. Ten years later, we are thrilled to commit another $5 million to support Washington State students today and into the future. It's because of students like these that Microsoft is stepping forward and donating another $15 million to the Washington State Opportunity Scholarship Program. We want to ensure that the students of tomorrow have the same life-changing opportunities and experiences as the students that will graduate today. We've seen firsthand that it makes all the difference in the world. Wow, these renewed investments in WSOS have the power to transform another generation of Washington students. These gifts represent proof to the promise of an opportunity scholarship and the lives that the scholarship transforms. To have the recommitment of these cornerstone partners is a vote of confidence in our shared work together. I am humbled by this generosity. Imagine what this means for our students for our economy, for Washington. With these original investments and thousands of others from companies, organizations, and individuals across our state, we have been able to award $104 million to Washington State students across these past 10 years. We have a decade's worth of proof that our program works. In fact, I've got some newly released numbers that will illustrate just how WSOS is doing this work better than anyone else in the nation. 
In the last 10 years, our baccalaureate program has supported more than 13,000 students. That's more than all of the students at Eastern Washington University this fall. Within five years of graduating, our baccalaureate scholars earn more than twice what their entire family earned when they entered college. That means that they're earning an average salary of nearly $100,000. And that translates to an additional lifetime earnings of much more than $2 million per scholar. That's $10 billion in lifetime earnings across our 5,000 plus graduates, just in the baccalaureate program alone. That's $10 billion that can stop the cycle of intergenerational poverty for thousands of families in every county in Washington. We graduate more students than the national average with a six-year graduation rate of 79% compared to a national average of just 60%. And while we are having this kind of incredible impact, we're also closing the opportunity gap. In 10 years, we've launched more than 1,000 engineers, 1,000 scientists, and over 900 healthcare professionals. But like you heard from Kimber earlier today, Right now, we're only scratching the surface of need in Washington State. Without your help, we won't be there for the class of 2026. We will be leaving highly deserving, highly qualified students without the money and support they need to meet our state's talent shortage and keep our economy thriving. Thousands of students will apply and miss out on a life-changing opportunity. We need your help today. Thank you to the many of you who have already donated. We are grateful for every single dollar in. It will take all of us working together to accomplish this for Washington and for our students. And now, please join me in welcoming Skills That Shine mentor and longtime supporter of WSOS, Douglas Barrancato. Thanks so much, Jane. Good morning, everyone. I'm Douglas Barrancato, and I'm a Chief of Staff at Microsoft. I work in the Azure division as a part of a cloud engineering team. I'm also a proud Washington State Opportunity Scholarship Skills That Shine mentor. College students are far more successful in their future careers when they have support and preparation while they're still in school. When I was running Microsoft IT's Accelerated College Hire program, I saw the difference that support and preparation makes. A few years back, a Skills That Shine mentor suggested I become a volunteer mentor too. I'm so glad they did. WSOS has a mission that's hard to say no to. When thinking about college students who may not have had access to career planning or career mentorship, I knew that I couldn't ignore the opportunity to support mentees through college and into their careers. I knew I had to step up and become a mentor. When I met my first mentee, I was sweating like a racehorse. Not perspiring, not glowing, sweating. This was pre-COVID, so our first meeting was face-to-face -face in the cafe at the Husky Union Building. It was a beautiful day, 60 degrees outside, blue skies, but the hub was stuffed with people, and it was about 85 degrees inside. Added to that, I'd run up a bunch of stairs to be early. My mentee had the elegance to ignore that I looked like I'd walked through a downpour without an umbrella to meet with him. But after my first experience as a mentor, in that first cycle, I was hooked. It was fun, it was rewarding, and I really liked the people on both sides of the program. After my first year as a mentor, I felt like I had made a contribution, however small. Although, personally, I thought I could do it better in the next cycle, having had some practice and learned a few things. One highlight over my years as a Skills That Shine mentor has been seeing the mentees who you get to know, who come to trust you and what you say, see the paths that they manage to create for themselves. And those paths are more impressive than the course loads they're plowing through and the GPAs they're managing. It's pretty impressive. Watching that kind of performance consistency gives you a lift. Being a Skills That Shine mentor offers me a chance to do something related to my day job, but interestingly different. I meet and interact with a bunch of people I probably wouldn't otherwise get to engage with. I feel good about it because I believe I am contributing materially to the building of both individual people and wider paths of progress that I'm paying something forward. And it's a great example of the value of the advice that runs, say yes to something you'd probably say no to and see what you discover on the other side. No matter who you are, where you are, you're involved in the competition for talent. Washington is up to its armpits in that battle. Its commercial well-being depends on winning it. Our state's been known as a leader in many sectors. 
What's the next evolution? The people that are attracted to the state, who are educated here, who stay here, will be the talent that defines the next big thing. WSOS is a cleverly designed give-get model. You give some of yourself, your effort, your attention, your investment, and you get a lot back in return. And that works for the scholars in the same way it does for the mentors. Like many people watching this, I donate to a lot of excruciatingly good causes. I keep giving to WSOS for the same reason that I continue to spend time working as a mentor, because of the multiples I get back, we get back, way, way over and above what I give in time. It's simple. Your contribution is magnified more than you can possibly conceive of when you start. And donating to WSOS is exactly the same. Donating today means that every dollar you give is matched, quadrupled by our challenge fund and the state of Washington. It's a no-brainer. You can give to WSOS and impact the lives of thousands of Washington State students like the ones you've met here today. So please join me in making a difference for the next Opportunity Scholars. Make your gift today. Thank you. Thank you, Douglas, for your years of dedication and support to WSOS. We can meet the demand for skilled workers by supporting the scholars we have right here at home. And that's possible because of the support of all of you. Thank you for your generous partnership in making the dreams of opportunity scholars like Nikita, Nu, Mastawal, and Sitlali a reality. They are the future of our state and we invite you to be part of their dreams. As you've heard today, every single dollar donated to WSOS is matched by state funds. And this isn't just today or this month, this is an ongoing commitment of the legislature. This morning, we also have a second match. The Challenge Fund will match every donation, $250 or more, up to $100,000. So for those gifts, your investment is quadrupled, amplifying the impact of your donation. One dollar becomes four, and that's the kind of math we can all get behind. What other investment has a rate of return like that? We wanna make giving as easy as possible, so take a look at your screen for all the ways you can give. If you have any questions about how to make a gift, please send us a chat message or reach out to us at otalks at waopportunityscholarship.org. Thank you so much again for joining us to support current and future Opportunity Scholars. We'll see you hopefully in person next time.